Hey guys, Roman here from Tech Guides, and in this video I'd like to share with you my recommended graphical settings for PC in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Now the goal of this video isn't really to provide you with all the information of a full FPS guide as you used to from my videos. This has to wait a little bit longer because there are simply so many options to benchmark and to test on different system, and I didn't have the time to do this yet. However, in this video, I want to show you what I would consider the best possible settings to get the highest performance in Modern Warfare 2 while still looking exceptionally great. Spoiler alert, setting everything to the lowest possible values isn't the solution. Now, before we start, you should make sure that you are currently not on the latest NVIDIA driver if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, because the latest driver actually leads to some flickering and to some performance issues. So instead, rather use the 522.25 driver. Besides that, make sure that the game actually knows the correct number of available threats on your system by adjusting the render worker count setting in the Call of Duty settings file. I made a full video on these two topics, so if you haven't seen it, then definitely check it out, linked in the card right now. Now, before moving on to the best graphical settings, I first also like to talk about the FOV and how it affects gaming performance in Modern Warfare 2. Historically, Call of Duty games always had a bit of a weird relationship between field of view and performance, and generally people think that the lower the field of view, the higher the performance, which really, as a general rule of thumb, isn't true, because if you have a very low FOV, then you'll also get a very high LOD, which means a high level of detail of the like objects that the game draws, and therefore your game is actually going to perform worse than with a slightly higher FOV. You can see it on basically the only graph that I'll show in this video. Um, you can see that basically around 90 FOV you'll get the highest performance and then it sharply drops down to the lowest performance that you get at 120 FOV, as probably everybody would have expected. So if you really want the highest possible performance, regardless of how your game looks, then choose an FOV of 90. But anyway, something else you can see on this graph is that I've actually included three different graphical presets um, and their respective performances for different field of views. So the blue line is what you would get if you set all settings in-game to the lowest possible option. As you can see, there is still a red line above, which is what I would consider the absolutely best and highest performing um, preset. Um, and then I'm also showing the green line, which is basically my recommended settings, which is slightly lower than having everything on the lowest, but it actually also looks significantly better than having everything on low. You see, here's a comparison between putting everything on the lowest possible value and my recommended settings. And this huge jump in graphical fidelity comes at only about a 3 to 4 FPS drop in performance, which in my opinion is totally worth it. But enough about the field of view, let's finally jump into what I would consider the best possible graphical settings for the highest performance in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Now these settings that I'm showing you here at the beginning are going to be for the people that don't really care about how the game looks. You just want the highest possible performance regardless how much the game looks like Minecraft. Now, obviously, if you're after the highest possible performance, you might be looking into upscaling using NVIDIA DLSS and actually getting quite significant FPS gains. But in today's video, I really don't want to talk about upscaling sharpening because I think this deserves its own dedicated video where I'm only going to be talking about the upscaling sharpening um, implementations that are available here in Modern Warfare 2. But until I have time to dig into all of the different settings, let's just go with sharpening disabled. Anti-aliasing, obviously the lowest possible one on the lowest quality. Video memory scale it should always be at 80%. This has been the case with Modern Warfare 2019 and should still apply. Under details and textures, set everything to low except for terrain memory. If you do have enough VRAM, then I would highly recommend to set this to max for a few percentage performance boost. If you don't like the game to look like absolute doggo, what I can recommend is to actually use low instead of a very low in terms of the texture resolution, which basically does not affect performance at all. Set streaming, volumetric and deferred physics quality all to the lowest value and definitely turn off water caustics. On the shadow and lightning, put everything to the lowest possible value except for spot shadow. This setting actually makes you gain a few percent FPS, so definitely increase this from low to medium. 
If you have a lot of VRAM available, then you might even consider setting this to high as this gives you a little bit more performance and the potential cost of more stuttering. And finally, for post-processing and effects, you'll obviously want the NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency enabled or even enabling Plus Boost. Sometimes this option can lead to slightly lower performance, so if you really want the highest possible performance, then select NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency on. And finally, under the Display tab, you'll probably want to select the Display Mode Full Screen Exclusive as this grants you the lowest amount of input lag possible. Theoretically, Full Screen Borderless will give you a few percentage more FPS than Full Screen Exclusive, but as I mentioned, if you want less input lag, then definitely stick to Full Screen Exclusive. And with having said that, let's now move on to what I would consider the currently best possible settings in Modern Warfare 2 to get the highest performance while still maintaining a visually appealing gaming experience. So for that, you want to select the Fidelity CAS Upscaling Sharpening. This is actually going to make your game look so much better than if you have it disabled at the cost of roughly 3 FPS. And the aliasing we keep on SMA two times on the lowest preset. Again, use a video memory scale of 80 in order to reduce lag spikes and stuttering in-game. Texture resolution, I would highly recommend to use normal instead of very low in order to significantly upgrade your gaming experience in Modern Warfare 2. Now, if you don't really get enough performance, then you can also go back to low, which does significantly decrease the visual fidelity of the game while literally not affecting performance at all. Anisotropic filtering has virtually no effect on performance, so select high. Nearby and distant level of detail have virtually no effect on what the game looks like, at least not while actually playing the game, so keep those on low. Same is true for cluttered draw distance. Now, particle quality does have an impact on how the game looks in certain situations, but it's also a significant FPS hog, so stick to low. Particle quality level has virtually no effect on the visual fidelity of the game, so select very low. Me personally, I like to have bullet impacts and spray enabled, but obviously you can toggle this on or off depending on your preference. Shader quality you almost definitely want to have on low unless you want to live with a very hefty performance penalty on both medium and high. Note that if you change this setting, you'll have to restart the game in order for the change to take effect. For tessellation, I really wasn't able to spot any differences with the different modes, so you might as well leave it disabled. As before, if you have enough VRAM, I would highly recommend to have terrain memory on max to gain a few percentage performance. On-demand texture streaming has no effect on performance, so therefore leave it enabled. The remainder of the settings I leave disabled, as especially volumetric detail, deferred physics quality and water caustics actually quite significantly reduce performance when increased, while the increase in visual fidelity is basically negligible. Shadow map resolution I like to set to normal in order to reduce the sort of graininess of the shadows on the very low setting. Screen space shadows you'll definitely want to have disabled, as these are the shadows that are cast on your weapon that look completely horrible on both the settings that are available. On the other hand, you'll likely want to increase spot shadow quality to medium in order to once again reduce the kind of graininess of shadows on different textures. Also, the spot cast shadow should definitely be increased from low to medium or even high, depending how much VRAM you have available, um, as this will actually give you a small and significant performance boost in-game. However, be careful as a too high setting introduces stuttering. Leave particle lightning on low and always disable ambient occlusion. This gives you a huge FPS drop and really does not add to the gaming experience in any form or fashion. Leave the remainder of shadow and lighting on the lowest values. Finally, under post-processing and effects, I usually disable the depth of field and motion blur, as well as set the film grain to zero, because these sort of post-processing effects just add visual noise on top of your game that simply don't give you any advantage. Additionally, the depth of field motion blur introduces this kind of graininess onto your weapon, which makes it look absolutely horrible. Finally, make sure to enable reflex low latency or even enabling the boost mode. Depending on your system, you might see better performance with either of these two settings. And finally, once again, use the display mode full screen exclusive. I currently simply don't use it because I'm recording a video for YouTube. 
And there you have it. Those are my recommended settings for the best performance while maintaining high visual fidelity in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Now I'm still working on a full FPS guide with side-by-side -side comparisons of each and every setting and very in-depth benchmarks of the different settings on two different systems, but because there are so many settings in Modern Warfare 2, this video simply has to wait a little bit longer. But if this video is already available at the time of you watching this video here, then I'll make sure to have it linked in the card right now. Now, if these settings helped you out, then leave me a like and or a comment. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.